Family Theatre presents Anne Blythe and Jean Cagney. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theatre, presents Days of Grace, starring Anne Blythe. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Jean Cagney. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, Days of Grace, starring Anne Blythe as Joan. <laughs> The time, September 1914. The scene, Paris. Joan Morley's suite in the Hotel Elysee. Hello, Father. Hello, Joan. Is it true about England declaring war? Two hours ago. Oh, Father, how could this have happened? Where is it going to end? Don't ask me. Joan, I'll book your passage to the States on the first sailing I can get. Oh, look, Father, if you're staying in England, so am I. <laughs> we'll settle that when you get here, my dear. All right. I'll see you tonight. Right. Good night, Joan. Goodbye, Father. Welcome back, Miss Joan. Thank you, Myra. Oh, Mr. Gerald is here. Gerald? In the library. He just now came. Oh, thank you. Yes, miss. Gerald, I'm so glad to... Hello, oh. Joan. Sorry I couldn't meet the train, but... What is it? What's wrong? You're in uniform. Naturally. But so soon I, I didn't you know... You knew that... I was a reserve officer. Right now I have a job to do in France. You're going to the front right away. Tomorrow, very likely. No. Joan. Joan, I... I... I never dreamed that it would mean so much to you. No, no, that, that's not true. I, I, I dreamed about it all right. I, I just never dared hope. Oh, I should have expected it, I suppose, that you would be going. It's only that, well, till now the war hasn't seemed quite real. Not actually related to me, that is. But to walk in like this and find you in uniform... Am I making sense? Of course you are. But, John, couldn't it all be said another way, that this has suddenly made you realize that you love me. I... I don't know. Because if that is what it means, Joan, will you marry me? Marry you? I love you. I need you so. You need me? If I could know before I start out that you'd be here waiting when I get back. Oh, Joan, you can't say no. You're right, Gerald. I can't say no. Oh, my dear. Gerald, there's not much time. We'll have to be married at once. No, Joan. We're going to wait. Wait? Till when? Until it's over. <laughs> you see, I want you for my wife, not my widow. Dear Gerald, I'm disappointed about your Christmas leave being cancelled. Father and I had planned a real holiday for you, but perhaps before too long... Joan, darling, I've just heard from my brother David in Canada. He's coming over to join my regiment and will arrive in England on April 16th. Will you meet him for me? He has dark hair, wears a moustache and so on. train that just arrived. That must be the one that met the Canadian ship. Oh! Oh, oh. oh I'm sorry. Oh. I wasn't looking where I was going. Oh, neither was I. <laughs> Clumsy of me. Oh, that's all right. I'm supposed to meet someone. Why, so am I. 
Maybe we can help each other. Uh, my man's about 5'9", light hair, and he'd be in uniform. Captain. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't seen him. But he's my brother. Uh, what's your victim like? Well, he's dark and... Good heavens. Your brother... You're not David. Why, yes. That's my name. David Loughlin. I'm Joan. Joan? Joan Morley. Oh, yes, of course. Gerald wrote me about meeting you ages ago. Uh, by the way, where is Gerald? He's still at the front. He has a leave coming up, but not until next week. Meanwhile, my instructions are to make the prodigal welcome and to show him the town. Fine. Oh, I thought we might start with the National Gallery tomorrow, the Crystal Palace on Friday, and perhaps Saturday boating on the Thames. <sighs> How's that for a schedule? Terrible. <laughs> All right, it's terrible. <laughs> now, look, I've lived most of my life in London. I'm going to show you a London you didn't even know existed. <laughs> David, it's been a wonderful week. It has. Oh, and I do love this place. But Gerald's train gets in so early in the morning. Shouldn't we go? Not yet. Look, uh, Joan, I... Oh, Monsieur Rothin. All has been satisfactory, no? Oh, splendid, Anton. As always. Especially the music. And Madame was also pleased. Oh, yes, Anton. What's this they're playing now? This? Oh, a melody of my own. You like it? Oh, Yes, it's, it's beautiful. Thank you, madame. Monsieur Loughlin is an old customer, and to have his wife like my melody, it pleases me greatly. Oh, but I'm not... Anton, as... here you are. Oh, oh, thank you. But it is too much. Oh, that's not a tip. It's for the melody. I want it reserved only for... for madame. Never play it when she's not here. You understand? Ah, but certainly. Perfectly, monsieur. David, what made him think that... Does it matter? Yes. Joan, have you any idea what this week has meant to me? That music is lovely, isn't it? We've laughed a lot, but... We've laughed because we were both afraid of words. You know, I, I don't think I'll ever forget this melody. Now, we can't be afraid any longer, Joan. We must... David, it's late. Let's go home. Joan, I'm coming in. No, please. But I've got to talk to you, Joan. But we... Oh, Joan. No, David, don't. Oh, my dearest. Oh, David. Darling. Why did you have to kiss me? Why couldn't you have left things as they were? Because I don't believe in denying the things I feel. Even to myself. Oh, don't say any more. David, Gerald comes home tomorrow. Suppose he does. What? What are you talking about? You don't know. No. I'm engaged to Gerald. You're... You're engaged to him? I'm going to marry him. Oh, no, you're not, Joan. You're going to marry me. I can't, David. We can't do that to him. Do you think I want to hurt him any more than you do? Joan, d d darling, look at me. No. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me that you don't love me. You know I can't. No, John. I John. do love you. I've never said that to any man, not even to Gerald. I love you. I love you. But I'm going to marry him. These last few days were never meant to be, and we're going to forget them. Do you understand, David? Gerald comes home tomorrow, and we're going to forget them. John? Yes, Gerald? What happened between you and David before I got home? Wh what happened? Well, that seems more than just a coincidence. Half a dozen times now I've made plans for the three of us to do things together. They never worked out. Tonight's just another example. Uh, I, I'm sure he understood about joining us oh, for the theater. Oh, David's been busy and he forgot, that's all. Well, I hope so. I couldn't believe that you and he just didn't hit it off. Oh, but we did. I like David tremendously. Of course. There's another possibility. What's that? It might be a girl who's kept him away. <laughs> 
perhaps that's it. Perhaps it is a girl. Well, it seems kind of foolish to wait much longer. Uh, yes? Oh, David, there you are. We'd almost given you up. Hello, Joan. Hello. You aren't still planning on the theater, Gerald? Certainly, why not? Well, haven't you heard the news? There's a big push on. All leaves are canceled. We leave for the front in the morning. Oh, no, David, I can't let you... And Gerald, it's so soon. The boat goes from Brighton at 10 sharp. And there's a train from Victoria at 7. Well, I'll, I'll run along now. Got a lot of packing to do. Good night. Boy and Joan, if I shouldn't see you in the morning, goodbye. Goodbye, David. I'll help you pack. There's plenty of time for that. I, uh, I want to talk to you, Joan, about our engagement. Oh? I think we ought to call it off. Oh, but why? Why should we? Well, obviously, I was wrong about how long the war will last, and... Uh, Joan, can't you understand? I'm trying to give you your out, if you'll take it. Gerald... I've seen what's up. Did you think of me a moment ago, or of David? You see, the people we love are the people we fear for. Be honest, Joan, and be sensible. What sort of sacrifice is so futile? We'd all end up unhappy. I didn't want it to be like this, believe me. I'm so sorry. So terribly sorry. I know. I wasn't sure myself what it meant to be in love. Not until Joan, please, you don't have to tell me. But I want to. I want you to understand. It's difficult to believe that anything could happen so quickly. So surely and completely as this did. I do understand. Perfectly. Gerald, if only it hadn't been you. Chelsea, 2871, please. What are you doing? David's club. He should be there by now. Uh, uh, hello. Left in the locker room, please. Tell him it's Miss Morley calling. You know, Joan, I, I, I'm glad we had this talk just now. You can be married before David leaves. Tonight? Yeah. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, just a moment. Here you are. You're sure, Gerald? It couldn't be any other way. He's waiting, Joan. Hello, David. David, you'd better come back here. Yes. Yes, darling, right away. You just made it. They've already given the last call aboard. Oh, Gerald, I still don't know how to thank you. You found happiness, Joan, so I've found my thanks. Goodbye. Wait, Gerald. Thank you for that. Goodbye. See you aboard, David. Right you are. Darling. David, I can't let you go now. I can't. No, it won't be for long, Joan. And then... There's so much ahead for us. I love you. Always, wherever you are. I love you. I'm sorry, I... Lieutenant, but you must come aboard, sir. The game plays. Yes, is going... yes all, all right, Carter. Goodbye, Joan. God bless you. I'll be thinking of you every moment. Goodbye, David. Goodbye. David, what's up? What did the Major want? Nothing much. Just my leave, that's all. What? It's cancelled. You and I have become so necessary to this army, we can't be spared at the same time. But you haven't seen Joan in months. Perhaps I can get the Major to let me stay instead. Oh, no, you do nothing of the kind. You go on to London. And, uh, Gerald, I want you to see Joan, will you? All right. No, I mean, you see a lot of her. The letters have been pretty blue lately. Try to get her out of it, will you? I will. But I still wish you'd let me take your place. No, no, not a chance. You go ahead now. Give Joan my love. Oh, and tell her I promise to be out of the trenches by Christmas.
Joan. Yes, Father. Hadn't I better come with you? No, no, please don't. Are you sure it's wise? Am I sure? No. No, I'm not sure of anything, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Hello, Gerald. Hello, John. Oh, you look well. Was it a good crossing? Perfect. Oh, sit down. Thanks. Oh, it's rotten luck, David's leave being canceled like that. Uh, well, when did you see him last? Uh, yesterday. How was he? How did he look? Never better. Only he says you're worrying too much. You're to quit it. Gerald, how long is your leave? Five days. Five days? Oh, <laughs> you say that as though it were a lifetime. No. No, it's just that... Gerald... Suppose we try to forget the war, both of us. Well, there's nothing in the world I'd like better. I had made plans for all three of us, but, well, we'll just have to make it the two of us instead. Right, and we'll drink a toast to the missing comrade in every club in London. No. No, we won't. Joan. Uh, well, how can we forget the war if we keep talking about David? Well, that hardly sounds like the speech of a devoted wife, but I know what you mean. When do we start? <laughs> Tea that tastes like tea. Now I know that I'm really home again. <laughs> the Savoy hasn't changed much, has it? I remember I came here years ago, and except for the uniforms, it looked just the same. Yes, as a matter of fact, it's... Oh, look. What is it? That fellow who's just going out. He's Martin from the Blackhawks. Their billet is in the village right next to ours. I'll ask him to join us. No, no, please don't. But he may have left there since I did, and he's a friend of David's. Perhaps uh, Gerald, he'll... let's let him go. Come on, I'd like to dance. <laughs> right you are. That's the best idea yet. But why did we have to come here? Why not? This is one of the... Oh, ah, Captain Laughlin, good evening. Hello, Anton. Oh, I'm Madame David Laughlin. It's good to see you. Thank you. And if you excuse me about one moment... Anton, wait... Uh... What's he up to? Gerald, I'd rather go somewhere else. Now, look, you've engineered all the rest of my leave. Surely I should decide where we'll spend my last evening. Well, there are other restaurants. Yes, but none like Anton's. This place has been a haunt of David's and mine for years. Why we... John, what's wrong? Gerald, let's not stay here any longer. But we just came. And listen, the music's marvelous. Oh, it's your last night home. Let's go someplace where we can celebrate, where there's dancing. Another kind of place... Anywhere. All right. But let's have dinner first. Please, Gerald, I want to go. Will you take me away from here? Of course, John. Of course I will. Well, Joan, another goodbye. Oh, I'll come to the train in the morning. No, I won't hear of it. You've worn yourself out giving me a holiday. You need to get some rest. Oh, I'm all right. You've been splendid. Can't thank you enough. It wouldn't have been anything without you. Oh, Gerald, you have enjoyed these few days. More than I can say. You've given me something to take back and remember. Oh, that was what I wanted. What do you want me to tell David? Nothing. No. Joan. Joan, what's come over you? Uh, David talks of you all the time, but you you scarcely mention his name. You, you've changed somehow. David understands. Believe me. And I'm to give him no message. My love is always with him. He knows that. All right, Joan. I'll go along now. Wait. I suppose that was for David. Yes. That was for David. Goodbye, Gerald. It was for you, David. Only for you. Joan. Well, Father, it's over. I don't know how you did it. I wanted to do it to make these days everything Gerald hoped they'd be. Because he may never be coming back to London either. My dear. I hurt Gerald once. I hurt him terribly. But now, in a way, I've made that up to him. He was happy, Father. And he never could have been if he'd known. He had his five days, five days of grace. And I gave them to him. But he's sure to find out now about David. Of course he will, but 
It'll be there at the front where one more death is such a little thing. Some officer will say it so casually. Too bad about your brother, Lachlan. Strange that it had to happen the very day you left on leave. And then Gerald will know. Oh, Joan. It's so clear now. And I'm sure that what I've done is right. It's the living who matter. It must always be. We do owe an obligation to the dead, but we owe an even greater obligation to the living while they are the living. Cagney again. Have you ever seen a little child who has strayed from his mother in a large gathering? At a circus, say, or, or the crowded streets of a big city? He's lost, alone, terrified. With all his heart, he wants to get back to her, to clasp her hand and sense her protection and love. But he can't find her. She's gone. There's nothing he can do but cry his heart out in a horrifying feeling of desolation. Well, I think a soul that has lost God must feel very much like that. Nowhere to turn, no one to help, nothing to look forward to but despair. Fortunately, there's a way for us to find our way back to God, an easy way, the way of prayer. Prayer is just talking to God, telling him we need him, telling him we're sorry for ever having left him. You've heard it said that more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Well, believe me, it's true. For the saint, and for the sinner, and for the millions of us who are in between. Daily prayer can work a miracle. The miracle of bringing us closer to the God who made us. And the same thing applies to the family that applies to the individual. Family prayer brings the family closer to God and assures all of the fact that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Days of Grace, starring Anne Blythe. Jean Cagney was your hostess. Others in our cast were Loney Blackman, Carlton Young, Pat McGeehan, Chet Stratton, and Leo Cleary. The script was written by True Boardman and Therese Lewis, with music conducted by Seymour Kramer, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present Mail Order Misses, starring Lisbeth Scott and Walter Brennan. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Thank you.